All right, y'all. So, um, first thing I want to give all praises, all praises to Ami um, Howard by Shema Rashad, because I know that this is one topic that I've been trying to get a revelation on for, you know, about, about for a while, for a while and everything. And I want to make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, spreading any false information, spreading anything, anything that's a lie. And, you know, um, basically, like, I'm you know, putting, my, putting my own, you know what I'm saying, self at risk. For uh, you know, just being what you what you would consider a, a false teacher or leading people down the wrong path, right? So um, I want to make sure that I get this correct before I even come on here and even make a video about about it. But um, it was confirmed to me, and like I, I'll give all praise to the Most High for um giving me this revelation to give to y'all people. And I, I'm just glad for my brothers, my counsel that um uh I, I uh that the Most High sent to me to edify me on this topic, right? But um. Let me go again to it. As I see, it's referring to whether or not a woman can wear pants, okay? And the whole thing about uh, this topic is that when it comes down to many counts, many counts may say that, oh, like, you know, um, you go to Deuteronomy 25, it said, basically, they're trying to say that, okay, what does a woman wear? I mean, what does a man wear? A man usually wear, wears pants and everything. So, so uh, if, a, if a man wears pants, that means a woman can wear pants. But I want to like kind of like you know break down because at, at the same time though I did have a um understanding, uh, like a little bit of under like almost like seventy five percent of the understanding you know what I'm saying pertaining to this topic. But I needed that extra like twenty five percent to really like have it have it like all the way confirmed that okay this this is this is right you know what I'm saying. But let's go again to it. Let me share my screen. So let's go and go to the verse. Okay, so it reads. Deuteronomy 22, 5, all right? It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination to the Lord thy God, all right? So the way I looked at this verse is that it's more so in reference, in reference to cross-dressing, right? Because we know that we, you have a woman's section and a man's section for a reason. There's a woman's section and a man's section for a reason. So there are uh, pants for women, there are pants for men, all right? So to say that, oh, like, you know, if a woman's wearing pants, it, and people try to say the whole, okay, um, there was a, 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 um, an Edomite woman, <laughs> an Edomite, an Edomite woman who, I guess, made the first pants, something like that, for the whole feminism thing, whatever it was. And I understand that, you know, like, what the, what the Edomite did was for a specific reason, but at the same time, though, I even saw, saw a source. I can't, I can't remember the source I brought up, but there was a source that I brought up. Um, I forgot what it was, but it said how even before that time, before that woman uh even, I guess made the I guess you could say pants or whatever for, for everybody to wear. I guess even before that time, there were many cultures who wore. I mean, where women they wore pants like you know what I'm saying uh attire, but the way that the way that they did it though is that when they were at home, when they were at home. They wore those pants things because, like, at, at, uh, being at home, they don't want to mess around and get their get their uh, dresses dirty. You know what I'm saying? Because a woman, when she's working, she's she's not gonna work in the garden or or like you know pick. I'm not picking cotton, <laughs> not sloppy. She's not gonna uh, work in the garden or do any housework where she's going around and sweating. You know what I'm saying? In her best dress. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna do it maybe like a gown, but but like they had pants, pants like you know what I'm saying attire that they wore at home, right? And when they went out in public. That is when they wore the dresses. That is when they showed modesty, like true modesty. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're at home, you can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if you got a husband, right? If you got a husband, when you're at home, it doesn't matter what you wear. Why? Because like, he he can see he can see everything about you. You can you can rock around butt naked all I care. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because that's your husband. That's your husband. That that's for it's for him to see your body. All right. That's your husband. All right. But when you go out in public. Make sure you cover up with, with whatever, whatever. Like, don't don't be going the same thing you wear in the house. That's not what you wear out in public, because your husband's the only one that should see. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what you got going on down there. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, though, um, the woman they still had pants. Like I'm saying, at home, at home they could they could wear those little pants things. But in public, they can they can still wear pants, but it just can't be super revealing though. You know what I'm saying? But plus, we all know that a lot of pants that women wear may be very um. Uh, what's what I'm looking for? It may be very uh distracting for the men 
when it comes down to trying to preach the word, right? That's why it, it is like, you know, suggested that they wear dresses. You know what I'm saying? There's even some, some also, there's also some dresses that women can wear that can be a little bit, you know what I'm saying, of showing of their curves. So, because sometimes a woman can't handle that. But as long as they're being um, um, uh, respectful to the husband or to the husbands, you know what I'm saying, that, that's in the, in the church and everything, and, and being very modest in their apparel, when it comes down to wearing a dress, that is when it's, it's substantial. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, this whole verse is referring to um, uh, staying in the men's section and the women's section. There's a man's section where they got pants. There's a woman's section where they got pants. If I see a man going to a woman's section, putting on some tight pants, they're in sin. Not supposed to be doing that. There's there's no reason why you should be going over to the woman's section, putting like buying their clothes, putting on a bra, and putting on like you know their panties. It's it's meant for for them, not you. All right. Now let me go deeper into this. Right. When you go into the uh, the uh, Hebrew. Because we didn't go to the Hebrew, it's not even a reference to pants at all, right? Let me just bring it up real quick. Hold on. It's, it's, it's loading right now, but y'all I'll bear with me real quick. All right, here we go. So when you go into that uh Hebrew word for man, it's gaber, right? And it means man, strong man, warrior, right? So in this context, it says warrior emphasizing strength or ability to fight, right? So it's referencing like a man that's in the army almost. Like what, 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 what they would call in the army today, a warrior. Somebody that, that's on the on the battlefield, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was um it was um prohibited for women to wear the attire that the warriors wore, right? How the warriors they probably had some, um basically like almost like a woman cannot be a part of the army. They, they cannot join in, in the they cannot be a part of the of the, the which is which was called it um this this Lord's army, right? They're not on the battlefield getting down and dirty. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not their role, that's not that's not their position. Their position is to be at home, protect uh, protect the children and everything, or take care of the children, or the husband's out doing doing the dirty work. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, still the woman is out there teach they they uh, teach the child and everything, while the husband, like I said, is out there, he he getting all down, getting all dirty and everything, then he bring back home the money bring back home bread, all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So the word, like I said, means warrior, right? So basically a, a woman shouldn't be putting on any warrior attire. It's kind of like, uh, what's the name, Mulan? How Mulan, she was trying, I think, I forgot I forgot how the story went, but I do know that in that in that uh, movie, though, if y'all know what I'm talking about, Mulan, how basically she put on a warrior's garment, right? So that's that's considered an abomination to the most high. Because you're doing, you're trying to trying to be a part part of the army. That's or be a part of the warrior system. That's one. And for two, you're putting on a, a man's a man's garment. That was that was made for a man to wear, not you. So Milan, she she she's in sin. You know what I'm saying? For that, putting on a, a warrior's a man's a man's garment, right? So that's one. Now let me uh go to this real quick. All right. Could, I'm I'm just give y'all some verses that a lot of people may use to uh, say how certain things were made for only only for uh, men, right? Now look, Exodus 28 and 42. Now I'm, I'm, I'll stay in this chapter as well because there's a verse in here that refers back to uh, something else. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it um, to uh, uh, explain this to y'all. But right here, Exodus 28 and 42, it reads, and thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, right? From their loins even unto the thighs, they shall they shall reach, right? So a lot of a lot of people may say that okay, uh, pants came from breeches, right? But first of all, this is not where pants. I'm not gonna say that, that, that I can't say that this is where pants came from because this is, is referring to underwear, right? When you go to the Hebrew word for breeches, it's miknas and it says underwear, drawers, trousers. A priestly undergarment of linen, right? Right here, a uh, sense of hiding, only a dual, draws from concealing the private parts, breeches, not pants. Underwear and pants are two different things, all right? So the thing about this was was because of the fact that, okay, this this was one, one of the uh, garments for the Levit uh, Levitical priests, right? Now, uh, Aaron, Aaron and his sons were, right? Now, all the, all the uh, Levites were. So basically, and this not, not just the Levites, but literally everybody, like literally everybody in the entire world, you know, they have an undergarment 
that covers their private part. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes out to specifically the Levitical priests, they were the main ones that like they were um study very study in the law, right? So they they were the ones that you know had to be referred to when it came down to understanding and even knowing the law, right? So they're gonna be pre they're gonna be preaching to a bunch of people, a bunch of people, right? So we all know what men have, right? We all know what they have. We all know that we, we got junk down there. You know what I'm saying? So if if you have a man and he's trying to preach to you and everything and it's staying all out, that, that's going to distract you. And that's not, that's not, you're like, you're trying to focus on the word and everything. You're trying to, trying to see how, how do you keep, how do you keep this a certain law? But this Levitical priest, he got his thing all out. Why? Because he don't have no uh, breeches on or underwear. Same thing with certain men who may have like you know great sweatpants something like that. You got great sweatpants on, and you, you, you have some, if you don't have some underwear on. You you're doing that for a reason. That's for one. For two, to be manip manipulative. That's for one. But for two, um, when it comes down to uh, what you call it, the whole like I said, this thing right here, it even it even describes what these breeches cover. It describes it in this verse, letting you know that it's not pants. Because pants goes all the way down to your ankle, all the way to down to your to your foot. Pants do not stop at the top. Right, because it says right here once again, and thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness, to cover their nakedness. So the pants, like just wearing pants alone, that does cover like your full nakedness, you know what I'm saying? But at, at the same time, though, you can still be loose in pants. And without underwear, you can still be loose in pants. That's a fact. We all we all know, like I said, we all men, so we're not all of us men that watch the video, but we all know that a man that can still be loose in their pants, right? So to keep everything covered, they have on underwear, underwear, which covers that nakedness, and then they put pants on top of that, right? The same thing for women. They have underwear that covers that nakedness, and then they put pants on top of that, all right? So it says right here, from the loins, meaning like your waist area, the loins to the thighs, that's underwear, not pants, all right? Just making it, making it clear, all right? So... So if anybody tried to use this verse and say that, oh, it's talking about pants, it's not talking about pants. Pants, uh, underwear, pants did not come from underwear at all. Pants and underwear are two different, to two totally different garments, all right? Two totally different garments, okay? So now, I want to uh, also show y'all, going back to uh, Deuteronomy 25, how it's mainly in reference to, like I said, cross dressing, right? Because how, how even back then, they had clothes that pertain to men and clothes that pertain to women, right? So let, let me show you this right here. Exodus 28 and 4, it reads, and these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and ephod in a robe, right? In a robe. So the Levitical priests, they had robes, right? They had robes that, that pertain to them. Now let me go to 2 Samuel 13 real quick. Uh, 2 Samuel 13 and 18. It reads, and she had a garment of diverse colors upon her with for a slacker. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparel, right? So the Levitical priests and the king's daughters, they had robes, but it pertains to their gender. It's the same, the same name of the clothing, but it pertains to their gender, right? So you had robes for women, robes for men. Do not, do not cross, do not flip it, and do, do not make the man wear the woman's robe and vice versa. Keep it separate, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's exactly like you know how it's tying back into Deuteronomy 22 and 5, how it's just it's just in reference to cross-dressing, not pants at all. It's, it's it doesn't make any sense for you know what I'm saying, like of a woman to have all these pants in her um in her wardrobe, and now she gotta throw it all the way just because you you you're saying that it's a law for her to not wear pants. And that's that's the reason why I kind of held back from uh, you know what I'm saying, um, making a video about it until I got fully edified. Why? Because I didn't want to be in sin or trying to add to the law and tell people or tell women that, okay, if you wear this, you're in sin. If you don't, then you're not, right? So let me uh, also go to a commentary real quick. Because I want to go to a commentary to show y'all how these commentaries are literally like saying the exact same thing that I'm saying, right? So I'm just, I'm just going to look up a few. So Cambridge uh, Bible for Schools and Colleges, right? It says, against wearing the clothes, et cetera, of the other sex, right? So clothes, it's like it. Clothes of the other six, all right? Um, as what is forbidden and styled in the abomination to, to Jehovah, 
The law probably probably refers to the heathen rites for the practice of the practice of which, including the interchange by the sex of their clothes, weapons, and le etc., leading to gross impurities. There is much evidence in the records of the Syrian and other ancient religions, right? So, like I said, even back then, back then, you had men wearing dresses, like even today, even today, which is the same thing that was done back then, right? Um, let me show, let me show this real quick. The same thing, look, look at this. Look at this. You got this a whole man with a dress on. Doing the exact same thing that was that was being done back then. That Hollywood, Hollywood wickedness. You know what I'm saying? Got a whole tuxedo dress on. And even got other other men today, like Young Thug. Uh, who else? Um, uh, what's what's a, uh, Russell Westbrook? Uh, uh, what Jaden Smith? Literally, you got all these people nowadays wearing dresses. It's like, bro, y'all y'all being feminized. Not putting on a woman's garment. Y'all not supposed to be wearing that. Y'all being feminized, right? So it's all about cross-dressing. It's not about whether or not a woman, you know, can wear pants. Once again, there are pants that pertain to women and only them, right? Ain't got nothing to do with, with any, you know what I'm saying, like any just specific garment because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. That's like that's like trying to say, oh, since a man wears a shirt, you can't wear shirts. It's like, wait, what? I, I have shirts that pertain, like these are women's shirts. Like you're telling me that this, this shirt with all this glitter on it, I can't wear it because just because you wear a shirt? That don't make sense. So if we, can, we can't just try to like make no presupposition that oh, just because a man wears pants and everything, and then try to tie that into uh how uh the, this Edomite whatever to make it to make it this this makes it even worse, right? Because we all we all know that you know the Edomite is our number is our number one enemy, right? So of course saying that the Edomite did this for for this reason, of course of course it'll convince us and influ influence they'll say oh so are you trying are you trying to uh, live like the heathen. Because the heathen, they 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 this what the, the heathen did, you know what I'm saying, to our woman. So are you trying are you trying to say that we should live like live like, live like the heathen? No, no, nah, not at all. Because there's nothing, there's nothing heathenistic about a woman wearing pants that pertain to her at all. Nothing heathen heathenistic about it. If it was made for her and her sex, her gender, let let her wear it. Just make sure that when you go into out, out of public or when you go to your camp or whatever it may be, that you're modest. Maybe wearing a dress and you, you're wearing your fringes and everything. Y'all wearing your fringes, all fringed up, and, and both of y'all are modest in apparel and cover all cover all the way up. Make sure that that, that is is a key point, right? Now, um, uh, let me go to first. Now let me go to another verse real quick that other people may use to say that um a man, I mean a woman can't wear pants, right? So First Timothy two and nine, all right? It reads, in like manner also. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shame face and sobriety, not with bordered hair or gold or, pearl, or pearls or costly array, right? So first Timothy two and nine. So when you go into the uh, Greek word for apparel, it says dress, right? It says dress, a lowering down, a letting down, a garment let down, dress attire, right? So yes, it does. It does say dress, right? But people try to like basically say that okay. Just because it says dress, it don't say pants. That means a, a woman can't wear pants. But first of all, you got to go into the context of what's going on and, and why Paul said what he said, right? So let's go back. And this is why we got to, like, like I always say, we got to stop acting like Christians. We're not, we're not Christians no more. You know what I'm saying? We're not Christians, all right? Got to go back to the beginning to understand context and then, you know what I'm saying, uh, read, read into it, right? So let's go back to the beginning, right? It reads, I exert, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, right? So let me show you some, some real quick. So supplication, um, what is that? Supplication, need, and uh, and, and, and then how do you say that word? Want, privation, penury, seeking, asking, and treating, okay? Uh, prayers, intercessions, right? Intercessions. Of falling in with, meeting with, interview, coming together to visit, right? Converse for any other cause that would interview is held, conference, conversation, right? So he said, with all these things, right, we made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all in all godliness and honesty, right? 
For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, right? Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge, knowledge, knowledge of truth. There is one God, one mediator, all right? Um, they ransom for all, be satisfied, okay? I'm during the, pre during the preacher and apostle, okay? Teaching the Gentiles, all right? But for a man, we pray everywhere with the holy hands, without rap pain. Okay? Then it says, in like manner also, women are drawn themselves, a lot of spirit, right? So, so. What is this? What is this in context? What is it talking about? Right? What what specific um situation is going on to why Paul is saying what he's saying? Right? Now the whole thing that I just I just talked about it. How basically when it comes down to coming into a, to coming together, when you go to camp, come to class, going going to so called church or whatever. This is giving you the instructions on how how a church or how the church or whatever um, or meeting or convocation should be held. How the woman and the man should come and uh be that's how they that's how they present themselves, right? Because it even says right here, um, what you call it, verse verse, uh, verse eleven, that the woman learn in silence with all sub uh, subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, to use her authority over a man, but to be in silence, right? This all going back to uh when you're in the church, right? So it's saying that in this instance, right, in this instance, when a woman is in public. When a woman is out with, with um, what you call it, uh, at, at a camp or at church, whatever it may be, you're supposed to be in modest apparel. But like I said, when you're at home, when you're at home, you with your husband. So you can wear whatever you want. Why? Because literally your husband can see everything. He, he He's the one that you share your body with. Same thing with your husband to you. Your husband's not supposed to be all, all, out, all out there, you know what I'm saying, showing his stuff to anybody else. And you're not supposed to be out there showing your stuff to anybody else. Both of y'all are like modest in apparel when y'all out in public, but when y'all like you know what I'm saying in your on your own home, in your own humble abode, you you can do whatever you want. You can be butt naked, running around in the uh what's it called in the um uh, in the kitchen, butt naked, be in a be in the house like you know like you can do whatever you want. Why? Because that's 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 the privacy that you you and your man have have. You know what I'm saying? It's but that's between y'all two. Nobody else knows what y'all got going on. They don't, they ain't gotta know. You know what I'm saying? But that's the whole point. That's what was going on in this verse. I was talking about when it come down in the in the in the um in the case where you have to go have to go to a meeting, or a convocation, or a camp, or a ch or church, whatever it may be. Be modest in your apparel. Make sure that you don't have anything showing, and you can also wear a dress, right? So now let me go to a commentary real quick to confirm what I'm saying. All right. So you go to First Timothy uh two and nine. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Okay, right here. This reading is a few commentaries, right? So it reads right here. In like manner, okay. The apostle continues his official injunctions in reference to public prayer. In reference to public prayer. Public prayer. Keep that in mind. Like I said, it's, it's in, when, you, when you go out in public, all right? Likewise, he goes on to say, I desire that women, when they pray, women also in the con congregation, had their duties as well as the men, right? While the latter were directed to conduct and lead the public prayer, the women who worshiped with, uh, with them were enjoined as their part of the solemn service to be present, adorned with neatness of apparel and modesty of demeanor and the holy, holy reputation of kind deeds, right? So once again, this is all in reference to all in context, talking about being out in public, doing public prayers, public, public meetings, all that stuff, all right? Then it says, adorn themselves in modest modest apparel. Now look, this direction to Christian women was not intended to apply to their ordinary dress in the world. This direction to Christian women was not intended to apply to their ordinary dress in the world. What does that mean? Basically, you ain't got to go all out, out everywhere. You ain't got to wear dresses all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're at home, you ain't got to always wear a dress. Why? Once again, you with your husband. Unless your husband wants you to wear a dress, then, then you got to. But when you're with your husband, you can legit expose yourself to him all you want why because that's that your body is meant for him so it's not intended for the other woman to always wear a dress everywhere they go you know what i'm saying if they're with their husband they can they can have they can be a little bit more more revealing than out in public but when you're in public especially when you're in when, when you're with, with your people and doing a public prayer you shouldn't be exposed like that at all all right so once again it says this direction it's christian woman was not intended to apply to their ordinary dress in the world, but simply explain to the sisters of the Ephesian flock that their place in public worship, 
in public worship was one of a quiet attention that their reverence and, and adoration must be shown not by thrusting themselves forward with a view to public teaching or public prayer, but by being present and taking part silently, avoiding especially any services, anything like a conspicuous, a conspicuous dress, right? A conspicuous, conspicuous dress or showy ornaments, anything in fact that uh, which will be likely to arouse attention or distract or distract the thoughts of others, right? So basically, what's going on? Like I said, is that like when you um even even with the men, with the men wearing those those breeches, right? Uh, also, vice versa with the uh, women wearing their their clothes. If there weren't anything that can be revealing of their body parts or their private parts, it's going to distract the people. Because everybody's trying to learn, but you got this one woman, one woman, she got her, her ass all up. And you you can't you can't even think straight now. You can't think straight. So that's that's why, like, you know, this, this verse is not talking about just, you know, a woman that she can't wear pants at all. At all. It is saying that in public, when you're in public, make or, or make sure that you know you're um covered up and that you dress in, in modest apparel, whether it be a dress or pants. Now. Now, for the man, I mean, not for the man, for the woman that may still think that it's, it's that they may not really be comfortable. Like, how, how, do, they, how do they uh go about dealing with um whether or not they want to wear pants? If you don't want to wear pants, if, if you don't want to wear pants, don't wear them. But if you do, do it. But to be on a safe side, just don't wear pants until you get edified on it, all right? And with this whole video, it should be edification. The, the woman that was trying to figure out whether or, not, whether or not they should wear pants, like I said beforehand, just wear dresses until you get edified. It ain't that it ain't that serious, you know what I'm saying? But until you get edified, then then you know what to do. Now you know that it's okay for you to wear pants. It's, it's not no huge issue. It's not not it's not nothing that you know we gotta see and, and um, argue about, you know, and get all stressed out about. Like no, it's, we all know for a fact. For one, it's not a law. People gotta show me in the law where it says that where it says that a woman she shouldn't wear pants. You gotta show me in the law. We already addressed all the verses. There may be some more that people people may have, but if you got some more, show it to me. But we addressed all the verses, showing exactly how it's, it's okay for a woman to wear pants, and also put it put it in its proper context and doing a pro proper breakdown, not just reading what it says and making our own presupposition. No, I'm going based off the word and based off history and other sources. Everything, everything that I said is not based on what I think. It's based off common sense tied into the uh, context, uh, also, also tied into the um, the uh, verses and the commentaries that I brought up, right? That's all it is, all right? So hopefully uh, y'all got edified on this, uh, especially for the woman. This this video is mainly for the woman who may have an issue with this topic of whether or not a woman should wear pants, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I know, like I said, it's been on my heart for a while, and I've been wanting to get, ed to get edified on it. On it. And I just want to give all praise to the Most High for uh, confirming it, because like I said, I was kind of like 75 percent sure, like 75 percent sure, almost 50 percent sure. But you know, I just need, needed that, like that, you know, that extra boost to really like put me over the edge, right? Like, okay, like now I'm good. Now I know, like, you know how to approach this verse and how to uh, edify people. You know, it's all good, right? And also, even beforehand, I I even like suggest I just I suggest to a lot of people whenever you, whenever you go into um what you call it breaking down certain verses, look at commentaries. Look at these commentaries because it will help you very much. Look at, look at the commentary, look at the Strong's. Use use all this stuff. You Everything that's up here, use all of it. All of it, the, the this, whatever whatever this, these things are, use it. Use it to your advantage to see exactly how, how to get a full, a full understanding. You know what I'm saying? You got to break down everything like like literally to, a, to its microcosm. You know what I'm saying? Break everything down to, to the atom. That's, that's how you gotta do it. You can't just you can't you just you just can't be on a surface level and read what it says and then go back just just, just stop right there. You know what I'm saying? Because the issue, like I said, the issue that a lot of people have is that they just like read what it says and just run with it and that's it. And some people, some people they stop at a certain point. They stop at a certain point and it, and it fits and it fits a certain doctrine, right? Like I said right here, First Timothy two and nine. When you look at the Hebrew word, I mean the Greek word for apparel. And it says dress, they stop right there. Like, okay, yeah, that's a done deal. It said, it said dress. How do you how do you deal with that? But you gotta go deeper into it. Deeper, go deeper into it. And like I said, when you understand that even before 
woman, uh, the whole uh, woman, what, what, what's her name? I think her name is Wallen, Wallen's Craft, whatever it may be. But, but, but before she even made pants or whatever, uh, what you call it? Um, literally, there was women that was wearing, that, that were they were um wearing pants like uh apparel at home when they when they were doing laundry, doing work, doing garden work, whatever it may be. So they wouldn't get their pants dirty. So you know, hopefully this video edified people, and edified mainly the sisters, because I know that the, the sisters, a lot of sisters have a, have an issue with this, because when a man's out there saying that oh a woman can't wear pants, this and this and that, da da da, da it's basically almost like leading leading them astray. And plus, at the same time, too, it's it's literally it's literally the bigger issue is Deuteronomy four and two. Deuteronomy four and two, when it says, "Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it." So, when our people, when our men are out there on the street corners, or is out there in any where it be on social media, in the street corners, in private conversation, whatever it may be, if you're sitting here trying to tell a woman that she can't wear pants and that that it's a law. To not wear pants, you're in sin. It's simple as that. You are in sin when you're adding, when you're, when you're saying that it's a law to wear pants when it's not. You gotta show me in the law. If not, you're in sin, you're adding to the law. And you're in you're you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. It's all it's all, it all comes back to, you know what I'm saying, keeping this law. It's all it all comes back to that. So when you're adding to these commandments, you're you're in sin. And even though it may be a little sin, and to be honest, it's not, it's not even a little sin, it's a big sin. All sins are big. All sins are big. When it comes down to uh, what's called it, um eat, eating certain foods, uh, all that, all that, all that is it's literally, it's literally all those sins have the same outcome, which is the lake of fire. All of them. All those sins have the same outcome, which is the lake of fire, all of them. And when you're doing these sins, at, and at the same time, too, if I'm even edifying you on, on this, and you still go out and preach this, you're still in sin. And I just hope that, like, you know, my brothers and sisters that may, that may preach something different, that they'll really, you know, um, come to a, an, not, come to the, just, just an agreement, come to, come to one truth, and not be, like, you know what I'm saying, going back and forth with two different doctrines. We all got to be on one accord. One truth, one sound, one doctrine, one God, all that. You know what I'm saying? All of that. One love. We can't sit here and that's that's why uh, Isaiah, let me get this real quick. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob, their sins, right? So if you see a brother in sin, show it to him or her, wh whoever it may be. Show them their sin. If they don't want to hear it, it's okay. Because some people, you know, that some people they they may not even care about it. Like you, you can probably go to a gay person right now and tell them, "Hey, you got to get that uh, sugar out your tank." You know what I'm saying? And they'll still go go home and, and live in sin. Why? They don't care. And they got that spirit on them to not care at all. There's a spirit on them to just like live live their own way, live, live their own lifestyle, and just you know live wickedly. And they don't care about that. Got all these got all these feminine men out here. All these um, what you call it, uh, masculine, masculine women, these dykes and stuff, all, all that stuff is just, it's just wicked. But we all got to come back to that one truth, one sound. But you know, at the same time, it is good to try to get other people into this truth, right? But the Bible only says that a remnant shall be saved, only a remnant. So you know, people that we can get get into this truth and that we can edify, let's do that. Let's do that. And be on all, be on the same page, be on one accord, and, and really help each other learn and help each other uh, get edified, right? So I'm gonna give all praise to uh, the Most High, all praise to you. How about Shema Shlach? Yeah, let me rewind that. Let me rewind that. I'm gonna give all praises, all praises to you. How about Shema Shlach? And I love y'all, and I love all y'all sisters. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this video um helped y'all in some way, shape, or form. And until next time, Shalom.